Tell us about yourself and what you do. My name is Jesse David. I'm an energy technology finalist at the United University. I'm an artist, so I use music to do a lot of advocacy to communicate the message of climate change, the role of youth, and also just to show the world that as young people, we can do something to just bring people together because the issues of climate change, they will affect the younger generation more in the future. So the decisions that are being made right now, they should be made in accordance to how things should be, not just to make decisions for political gain and ignore the voices of the youth. Why is this work important for you? Uh, let me start now from my side of music first and how I transition to being an artist. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing music since primary level. And uh, joining high school, I've been music, going to festivals and stuff, joining campus now. I've been recording some music here and there. And then mid this year, around July, I got an opportunity to attend the Nairobi Summer School of Planet Justice. And I met many young people from across Africa who are there and have been taught about the impacts of climate, our role in terms of advocacy and what we can do. Being an energy technology finalist, I advocate for renewable energy. That's my field of expertise because that's where I want to measure in. But I realized instead of waiting so much, I could use what I have right now and have music right now. So I decided to use music from the summer school. That's why I was right. Music here. As much as I want to do bigger things in the field, sometime in terms of policy and stuff, let me start with what I love. And it's been amazing. So that's Yeah, and um, is this your first cop? Yeah, definitely. This mm -hmm. is my first cop. And how has the experience been like so far? It's been... Let me look for the right stuff. <laughs> It's been exciting, it's been confusing too. I've been all over, sometimes I've been confused to some point, but thanks to the team that they came with here, we've been able to learn, the people guiding us, because when you just enter this place and you don't have a plan of what you're supposed to do, which conference you're supposed to attend, or what activity you're supposed to do, it will be, it will be chaos for you. So, yeah. Do you have hope? for a good outcome in this COP? When Africa being considered as a, as a conflict of special needs as a, and circumstances which drop, then we lost hope. But still we have hope for the future. We cannot lose hope right now because as much as we are beaten down, because we know at any trajectory, Africa will suffer the most from the adverse effect of climate change. Look at our countries right now, the flooding in Nigeria, people dying and lives are dying in Kenya. Okay. These are really issues that are happening out here. And Africa not being considered as a continent of special needs and circumstances is a big issue. You know, people are coming here to make business deals and watch not and to have discussions over, I don't know, a coma was supposed to be somewhere in this uh, in this uh, bilateral that they're making or something is supposed to be here and people are dying or losing lives. So it's something that's bigger than all of us and we have to have a focus. Yeah. What is that one thing or two things that will make you say this was a successful COP? First and foremost, I'll just repeat myself again mm -hmm. because one is Africa to be considered as a constant of special needs in mm -hmm. That's one. Second, we have seen that loss of damage was taken, but people don't want to talk about the issue of adaptation because that is one of the main issues. Okay, because you cannot say adaptation and all mitigation that together, adaptation and mitigation. So adaptation should be one of the main things to yeah. to push for. Yeah. And You've taken a very interesting uh, route to your activism. And as I was telling you earlier, there aren't enough people using art, and in this case, music, to do activism. So how, how has it been? And um, would you say you've, um, when you do your music now, you find it more fulfilling now that it's for a good cause? Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That is like the whole purpose of meaning because while I was in second year in the School of Engineering, 
I felt I had no powers. My friends in high school, we were doing music together and then they joined the music department and they were doing music. So every time from the School of Engineering, passing through the music, I felt these people are leaving their, their purpose. I'm being beaten by mathematics and some physics there. And these people are happy. And then going to the summer school, I realized, oh, I have purpose through engineering too, because energy is one of the leading contributors of climate change. So I was like, you see, I have, purpose, I, I have something to do with my engineering too that I nearly dropped at second year because of lack of mentorship and enough information, because that's what we're lacking right now as young people. And also in music, I could sing and could go for a couple of gigs and it could just be, okay, okay. You're just doing music for the sake. Okay, you're having fun, but taking this route of communicating and having a bigger purpose behind what I do is so exciting. As much as it's exciting, I know that I have a responsibility that is bigger than me. Yeah? So, yeah, it's really, as much as it's, there is a lot you need to know before you come to the music side, I believe that's a capacity that I have been building over time because from the summer school, learning there more about climate and how I can use my music. And then in uh, Pakiza, they have been having a campaign called the Climate Justice Torch, where the song that I wrote and performed at the summer school, we were able to, uh, they launched the, the, that Climate Justice Torch in Liberty Gabon, and I was taken there, and I got to share the music with uh, the minister of Gabon and also the leaders of there to understand what youths want to be kept. The Climate Justice Torch moved from Libreville, Gabon, to Senegal, the Amsterdam Conference. From Senegal, it moved to Zambia, to Namibia, it went to the pre corp in uh, Congo, and then it went to Morocco, and then now it's a COP. And it's an honor having the music that I wrote being the anthem of this Climate Justice Torch, because the Climate Justice Torch, its main thing is to amplify and to, and to mobilize the voices of the vulnerable in the community. Yeah, the, we're talking about here the women, the youth, the fisher folk, the indigenous in the community. These people are being ignored so that they get an accountability with COP27, of which we will know after this COP is done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm excited for you. You can clearly tell by just how widely I'm smiling. Uh, so is this the song that you're going to share with us today or you want to... Absolutely, I'll share that song. Then let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I see the horizon bloody, the sun is flowing, the moon is dim at night. I see the wind is angry, tears from the ocean. The mountains are shaking in pain I see all you can see I see why can't you see I see all you can see The time is changing I see all you can see I see why can't you see I see all you can see The time is changing River running dry, no rain in the sky. My people always cry, can't farm in the dry land. Cause there is food insecurity, but to be anxiety, what's the remedy? Gender inequality was all the century, what's the remedy? Energy crisis. Poverty in my streets was a remedy. I see all you can see. I see why can't you see? I see all you can see. The climate's changing. I see all you can see. I see why can't you see? I see all you can see. The climate's changing. So what do we want? Climate justice and when do we want it? Now, now. So what do we want? Climate justice and when do we want it? Now, now. So what do we want? 
for me to try me a chick's teasy when you were pointy now, now. My goodness, I got such a beautiful song and thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm mind blown by your talent. You're obviously very talented and thank you for using your voice and your talent to communicate the message of climate change because you're not just speaking for yourself. You're speaking for the millions of people who are not here at COP number one who have no pl platforms that we have and who are at the forefront of the impacts of climate change. So you're, in, you're such an inspiration and the world should hear your voice and you have an amazing voice. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time. It's an honor to be doing an amazing work. You're thank one you. of the people of whom we are looking up to you, like being humble to to just working together to make this work. Yes. Yeah. We're proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. Proud of you too. <laughs>